Okay, hello friends. As I promised, here is our demo that I missed teaching last time. So very quickly, we will be painting this bouquet of flowers. And I know the actual reference is a square, but I'm going to just paint it on this horizontal format. And it's very, very lush, lots of flowers, and I'm sketching it very, very roughly, basically just outlining the whole silhouette and what I see there. And it's good to have things coming out of the edges of the paper, and we will kind of fill up everything. So, as you can see, it's very, very rough, and you can just very, very roughly indicate where the main flowers are so just like all those uh, really draw them super quick and this is this about it and here I'm gonna have an indication of where this little vase is going to be and some more flowers here but generally all we do is basically indicate where this is standing and that's about it and we are ready to paint so as you can see it's really really rough and we're going to analyze it i love the reds i love the greens so we can use just the purples only for accents but it's just going to be in that color palette and we always go for the limited palette so as usual i'm going to wet our paper really really loosely and we're going to try to paint from the outside in again starting with the background and as you can see the background is um, nice and light and there's something very nice and soft about it so although we do interpret what we see i'd like to follow this what i see over there um roughly so again after wetting the paper i'm going to mix a nice color maybe some turquoise. Let's go for the turquoise. We don't have to be literal with the colors we see. And we don't want to be too bright with the background because that's going to overwhelm the whole painting. I will go for a bit more grayish. So turquoise is great and maybe a little bit of yellow. And just, again, very, very roughly, some nice soft areas and shapes. And since everything is nice and very wet, we're getting this super soft feeling. So I'm, I mixed a little bit of turquoise and some yellow here on some areas. So it could be all combination of yellow and turquoise. This is a bit too bright. So I'm just toning it down and again introduce some turquoise again and just keeping it light, not too bright. And definitely don't worry about, you know, painting outside. As always, just keep it nice and soft. I'm just killing some of these edges over here. And the reason why we want to keep it soft is because we don't really want to overwhelm the whole painting so i'm mixing a touch bit of i think it's either um, paint gray that i have with this main color that i call that i mix so i'm just going to introduce some more gray on this side let me just move this brush okay so lots of water things are spattering a little bit more color and just dab it so you can get some nice Color, but not too bright again just keep it not too bright mostly on the gray side and I'm grabbing a little bit of this paint gray again and there's as you can see there's a lot of leaves over here so I'm going to maybe just always look at the big shapes I'm just seeing big shapes of green and I'm just painting that without paying attention to the actual shapes at this point uh, killing some of these edges let's kill some of these edges by throwing some clean water and our next step would be so there's lots of light over here maybe just a light yellow which is the table 
And the reason why I start always with the background is just kind of gets the I use it as a prelude of yeah, it just gives me the whole tone of how I'm going to approach what's really most important is this all these flowers. So it sets the tone in other words. So here we have a little bit more dark and let's have this. That's the shadow area in the very front. So I'm taking this paint gray color right here. And you can look, you can see the, the words of Rihanna Artistic of my paper. Uh, you can either paint with some lots of water or some dry brush technique. But yeah, I try to have it soft and since it's the foreground yeah maybe it can have some dry brush technique but I, I really don't want to see all this matter so that's okay I mean it may it may be a cool touch so as you can see I'm moving my brush in all kinds of directions let's grab some some more of this turquoise so I will be using this turquoise a lot more obviously that will be one of my predominant colors everywhere i will be using it inside too so that will be the unifying tone in this whole painting and yeah the yellows the turquoise and some colorful accent of the flowers um so here we go and I, I, you can, even though these are all colors i'm just gonna pop this tone because that will be this is all in the shadow in the shade so as always we always look at the light versus shadow so generally this whole bouquet is obviously in the shadow the light is behind it so we can approach it in that way by maybe painting like on one overall tone so this way we can have one medium valley in the middle and keep the light in the background yeah why not and maybe have some light in those flowers that are sort of the focal point so I'm going to wet my paper and again no fear I always teach no fear in watercolor you can even spatter some clean water here to get a little bit of wonderful effects that we always have and clean clean water and I'm going to just run again this turquoise this is like a sh nice shadow tone I can just run it everywhere and don't worry um, maybe leave some white just a little bit uh, maybe above here and around there but generally this can be like an overall tone and on top of it we will introduce the colors of the flowers but this is the unifying tone that we are setting everywhere like turquoise and yellow and maybe some grays, especially here where the leaves are. And again, as you can see, no worry about detail. I'm not talking about detail yet. I'm just looking at the big shape, just squint your eye. I'm squinting your eyes right now. Well, I'm squinting my eyes rather <laughs> right now. And I'm seeing darker shapes here, more on the grayish side just very very abstract approach in the beginning see here and over here in this whole area so it's all kind of having the same tone and maybe a little bit more turquoise with a little bit of touch of yellow for the brighter areas here and still leaving maybe some areas white not everything with a tone. So this is our beginning. This is how we started this painting. And I really, I looked at it and that's what it, it tells me really to do. It, it, the actual reference kind of inspires you to go this way. And yeah, maybe introduce a little bit more tone here and we can always go back. And you know, sometimes I like to kind of wipe swipe things with my paper towel but in this case in this case well we will start with our flowers so now we have the overall tone like this is the unifying tone of the whole thing and we see some some of this color everywhere so now now that we have this as almost as an underpainting now we can go into the details and it, that is the fun part so Let's take a look. So now we can mix some of this 
purple flower up there and we will i'm mixing alizarin crimson ultramarine to get this color so the alizarin crimson some ultramarine and then mixing a nice purple and don't worry too much about the exactly exact shape of this flower but see how my paper is still very wet so some of these will come up come out soft some of these little flowers that i'm painting that will be looking very very soft and that's okay because that is not going to my going to be my focal point these are just flowers i'm going to pick only a few that will be more uh, prominent and they will be sharper in focus and in contrast so here we go this is really a very very dark one and basically yeah just free free flowing let the paint do its thing again painted very softly i'm not worrying about the details yet maybe just the overall silhouette of this flower obviously there are some dark areas and we'll get to that but right now i'm just dabbing here i see some dark over there and i'm using all parts of my brush as you can see here maybe there is a bit of dark over there okay and now while everything is still wet i just want to lift a bit a little bit to give some dimension to this flower and again this is i'm lifting this part and let's lift some of these guys over there and you can take some paper towel and dab like that to just get some more shape okay voila and here we have some nice soft beautiful flowers we're continuing with the rest now here there's a nice dark area that i want to address right away before we get into the other flowers so i'm mixing some intense blue i think i must have probably have some yeah this is ultramarine blue deep and i'm going to mix it with some of this sap green here that i have to kind of tone it down a little bit maybe a bit burnt sienna over here or indigo to tone it down so it's not super super bright we just want to have everything nice and toned in a family so here i'm just introducing this little dark area of leaves and we can go back to it again and i know maybe some more over here again approach it in a very very abstract way we will come back to all these leaves a little later but we want to have some soft definitely soft nice areas and you can lift to give some more dimension some sort of a shape to these leaves we love lifting don't we okay so now we can introduce our colors here I'm grabbing some very, very bright red that I have right here. And that's going to be our next flower. Um, is that a poppy? Something. So very bright. I love that because it, it is going to pop as a nice accent against this green. It appears as a complementary color. It's beautiful. So see, I'm just popping the side of my brush and I already have a flower. It may not be the same shape, but it works. It works in this case so right here we have a rose or something one of these flowers that have a lot of petals coming so I'm just gonna do one overall shape like that again see how loosely we are painting everything looks really nice and soft I'm going to grab some more dark red over here to give dimension so remember the flowers are never flat they're just three-dimensional shapes and in this case that's what how we are showing it there is dark area always in the middle because it's all in the shadow so we pop some dark and later we will go back and go into some more details but this is uh this is good enough for this one 
maybe you can just lift because I do see some lighter areas so you can just lift some of these little shapes and overlapping each other and I'm basically just lifting with the side of my dry brush and see it starts to look nice and soft and we will emphasize it a little bit later so here there is a little edge forming I'm going to soften it because I know there is another flower possibly next to it now how do we paint this white flower these white flowers over there I'll just grab some blue let's get some of this ultramarine okay or some of this mix of turquoise that we have it's just similar to the color of the background basically and it's it is hard to see so I will indicate it again with the side of my brush they're just just like that very minimal a little bit of dabs these are just these little flowers I will get to them right now I'm not gonna because they're too small so let's do our big shape first so there's nice beautiful yellow flower right in the middle I'm grabbing some ultramarine uh, not ultramarine sorry <laughs> cadmium yellow there it is cadmium yellow okay it's it's getting right here and it's going to be nice and beautiful a wonderful accent I love this so with some maybe let's grab some green maybe here we just introduce a little bit of tone because it definitely has some nice reflection but it kind of goes very very well with the rest so I'm lifting because I see definitely you know those petals so we're going to lift some of these shapes there's more over here, there's more over there. Here, still lifting, and I will go back again with some more details, and that's good enough for now. So we're just doing the basic shapes, the overall shapes of uh, all these flowers, all looking super soft. Okay, here is the white flower. I'm just using the green and the turquoise color. Yeah, it is even hard to see all these details, so I'm just gonna sort of improvise, make it up. And edges all are very soft and edges disappear into each other. So we have nice pink on that side, pink and red, lizard and crimson and regular red. And again, we want to try to be as soft as we can with very nice impressionistic brush strokes. That looks a bit dark, so I'm going to grab some more red. And just all these petals, I'm just one, I'm doing one brush stroke around, like, see how they're just going around. And they're not too much of lines. I see rather shapes and some edges, some light edges popping in. So keep in mind, there's some, a lot of still a lot of softness. Keep that softness, and yeah, you can just lift some of these light areas, creating these nice edges, immediately giving a three-dimensional feel to the flower. Right now, okay, lifting over here, and then right next to it, we see again something pinkish we don't want to go into too many colors we're just going to keep it just with a few red ones and everything else into the greens and i'll show you how we're going to unify it later on after we finish all these beautiful flowers okay so this is that a little bit more spread out so there's some petals going this way yeah, don't be afraid to be to have a very impressionistic brush strokes and have some of these edges disappear we are not going to outline we are not going to have flowers touching not touching don't worry about all this stuff see how they're all connecting in a way so that's going to create and then when we come back with all the details it's all going to come together so yeah, some of these purples now see how they're drying very light and I'll definitely go back and 
make this denser and darker here we're going with the next flower over here and just use the side of your brush with some of these shapes don't be afraid to use lots of pigment here I'm just going like this one is going this way and immediately you already have a petal like by using the side of your brush and laying it horizontally there's some more here in the foreground and they will be a bit darker so I'm using pigment okay so again still things are pretty abstract and you can always lift I'm just lifting some of these edges there's some edge over here see whatever's underneath it shows okay so definitely things are starting to shape up i'm still getting a bit now i'm going to look at some more flowers over here these are the, those little and i'm going to use maybe a bluish gray or whatever little purple mix it with red to just keep it again limited palette keep it in the family even though they're not they're very light over there we're just going to paint them a little bit darker and i'm going to actually have some of them disappear really just have them as a suggestion because they're the most important flowers are somewhere here and you can always you know do our little spider technique to add some excitement now what is the other main flower we have some flowers reddish yellow here something orange right here and again brush strokes interesting petals maybe that yellow should probably pop right here in the in the light and see how i just really softened up with the side of my brush and normally this looks so central so i'm glad that there are some other flowers on the on the table there to kind of offset that completely symmetrical composition so here we go there are some interesting flowers right here laying and this is how we do these little shapes of petals and now I'm gonna oops that was a lot of spatter <laughs> and why not we can always leave it and I'm going to definitely let this really dissolve like lose that edge right there and you can always lift there's some bunch of interesting petals edges the edges and i can just lift some of them and then there's another one right next to it and again they don't have to be all outlined some could be just a suggestion because that's going to ground the whole painting it will be all grounding, grounded. Don't worry about not being perfectly precise. Let's pay a little bit of attention to this vase that they're in because that does give some solidity to the whole composition and um, anchor, kind of anchors everything. And I'm going to introduce a little bit of dark. Obviously, all these flowers are casting a shadow on it. So we're going to have some more lines because it's glass and I'm killing again some edges and there will be some reflection of all these flowers apparently so here I'm dabbing a little bit of red to show the reflection there may be obviously a little bit of yellow and now we are going with our dark colors let's get a smaller brush i need a little bit of a smaller brush because now we have some more detail and that will really uh, create more structure so these are going to be the leaves here i have table turquoise i believe or is it taylor green or taylor turquoise i'm not quite sure so i'm mixing it with some indigo to get this dark green color and 
start painting the leaves by standing leaves right here and again don't be too little with what you see over there I'm just creating the impression painting a little bit around having an edge I see some darks coming out from here be again bold with your brush strokes maybe it's not quite exactly like over there but it looks good the way it is and again just be very very free and a little sketchy with your brush strokes okay some more dark this is a really nice color and yeah, there is definitely the little blue little halo green or halo turquoise so here and uh, hopefully i'm not <laughs> speaking under my nose hopefully you can hear me all right so here we introducing the darks see how stains are starting to pop out already and yeah yeah maybe we can emphasize some of this edge because that is center of attention here our focal point don't worry about too much detail there we just want to emphasize some of these edges by painting basically the negative shade here we have some more darks dark leaves uh, over here definitely surrounding and a lot of excitement is happening so you can be a bit more very free with your brush strokes you don't have to be ultra uh, careful and being exactly literal of what's going on we will add some more excitement towards the very end with our rigor brush but for now we're just touching up on this darks and here there's some nice negative shapes that i see and i'm almost looking looking at them as uh, as an abstract really as an abstract shape not quite trying to even guess what exactly it is i know there is something yeah some flowers and buds and things so we're not even into the details yet just adding more dark there is some more leaves here again we don't want to create anything that's parallel or too organized remember these are all organic shapes basically plants and they're not too organized things are always free flowing in different direction so there's some negative shapes that I see so I'm painting around maybe these are some leaves there is a leaf right here just dabbing your and see how my green is a bit bluish so it kind of goes well with the overall color scheme of turquoise and green and blues so I'm just dabbing a little bit the side of my brush it's going to create a nice interesting shape okay and here I believe there's some more leaves and if you can't tell what it is don't try to make too much sense of it we can just create some sort of yeah stuff obviously there is just little things going on keep a, keep the green dark not really the brightest green don't get the the darkest green the brightest green because when you squint your eyes this is a dark bouquet as a silhouette in front of a very light background almost like the whole light with the sun is behind it so there is an interesting lighting situation going on and we want to keep this the values dark so to separate it from the background so everything is sort of more on the dark or more dense and more saturated with darker tones and here we have a lot of dark so I'm just gonna grab some of this paint gray that I really like it's not black it's not blue it's paint gray so here there's some stuff so dab dab have have some more details going this way I know we, lo we lost some of these darker areas so I'm going to reintroduce them right here to 
keep the dark somehow everything dries a, bit, a little bit on the lighter side but this is all, all fine here is another so one two here's one two three so there's always be always be aware of interesting you know design compositions and nothing not to be too repetitive or if you're repetitive break it up some here and there so see how these are almost disappearing i like that i'm just doing some crazy lines and there are some cool there are some really really cool let's see which brush should we take yeah this is a smaller brush and it's gonna work very well with these small leaves here and branches so i'm still taking this halo green with the with the pink gray mixing it and now we're gonna create some really really nice shapes how about some lines so it's coming from here there is another one probably coming from over there you don't want to see very yeah these little stems they should not be very thick they should be very thin very refined work so let's work on these petals right here so it goes in this direction so if we have that 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 make sure you point is really pointy of your brush so you have a nice pointy brush lots of water lots of pigment and this way you're really going to get some very interesting very very interesting leaves going in every direction and be very very artistic and move your brush in, in all kinds of directions so look at look at which way they're going so they're going this way just keep the overall overall shapes overall direction but be creative with your movements basically so here we have tap 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 see how i'm just tapping with my with my brush and it may not be exactly like that but i don't like what's happening so and you can introduce a little bit of a tone uh warmer tone that it doesn't have to be all gray or green so here i'm mixing this orange and it appears almost brown so yeah there are some tones in those leaves maybe just to make it to break it up a little bit so they're not all the same and here i'm just like dabbing a bit and playing with all these interesting leaves that we have here because obviously there's light there's reflection everywhere things from all kinds of directions and again, you can improvise a little bit with your leaves. Some fine. Some going the other way. And you know, you can also spatter a little bit to get this motion. You can kill some of these edges too, so they're not like cutouts. It all dissolves into the atmosphere. Parts of it go, show up, disappear. Don't worry about the spatter too. So we have some more of these guys in the other side, on the other side. Maybe introduce some turquoise that we use for the background because that will connect everything. So here we go. So more of these. Yeah, and it's nice to just come out of the, the edges of the paper compositionally. I always encourage that. Otherwise, everything is just too confine smack in the middle and i like things to just go out a bit and it does create some more movement all right then here's some more leaves just the basic direction just dab it with the side of your brush doesn't matter what brush you have as long as you have some with a point then it's going to create some interesting shapes even if it's dry brush some can disappear, some can reappear. Maybe we can dab some yellows. Even some water, maybe. To kind of yeah, make it more alive. And yeah, I'm going to introduce maybe some, some yellow leaves here. Because they're all going into the light. Popping up. And it's all connecting together 
let's have some more leaves again that turquoise and the other halo green see i'm not using the green green i always try to mix my greens they it unifies the whole thing somehow so definitely so maybe more distinct leaves here see if i'm just laying it out like that And we're going to have some more movement on this side and yeah why not have all these come out or maybe yeah these are coming out we can make these coming out but the leaves on this side could stay so it's all up to you you're the designer you're the artist you decide what you want to do we are not gonna be slave on our reference so I'm just introducing some interesting greens, some more leaves. Yes, a dash of yellow. That shows the reflection of the light that's behind, apparently. And we can kill some edges again. Let's grab some more. Now some, some of the dark is gonna need, need some darker leaves over here gray and gray halo and here now we can actually pay attention to this shape over here because that's going that's the negative shape and that's flower is going to be important so i'm going to sort of keep this and let's make it a bit darker so they really pop Okay, nothing should be super the same or very repetitive. Here again, I need to reinforce this bit and this does. I need to, okay, there's some more of these leaves here. And it continues. Some of these leaves apparently are popping over here. So they're not completely all outlined and clean and perfect, all these flowers has they have stuff going on so little by little we're just adding and adding some more stuff we can you know you can add as many flowers as you want you don't have to limit so yeah definitely i know that there is something go, going on here you can maybe squeeze something in over here if you'd like and now we will be adding detail starting to get into more of the detail all right and uh, always pay attention to the center of your flower there's something happening in that center and here i'm getting some burnt sienna we're gonna pop it right here where we think the center is and just put a little dot, dots something maybe a warmer tone around Let's not go into too many other colors. So I'm just keeping it all the same, but a little bit warmer inside because obviously we that's how we create depth. This is all in the shadow inside. And now we're paying attention to a little bit more details. I know that there is a line here. There is a line. Yeah, try not to use too many lines. Paint rather shapes than lines. So this I'm going to turn it into a shape so because that's a shadow for the next petal coming out. Here we have some more coming out and we can introduce some of these shadows around. And that's how we build this shape of this flower. Some appear, some disappear. I'm just introducing it right here some more like something happening and some more happening over here okay some more and we can always go back and add some to it but this is this little area and I can pop in some red why not I mean it's right next to a red flower so 
it things in our painting should communicate always be close to each other how is our recording going it's going all right i just needed to double check okay here i'm getting a little bit of a darker red now with some of this paint gray and we will introduce some more detail with this follow over here again pay attention to that center here there's stuff happening and it's always darker there's some petals Maybe some brighter colors because that is a pretty bright flower and you can just you know put a little dabs that's how you create some more dimension some more shapes one is going this way one is going that way it's like overlapping layers pretty much that's how it seems to be going so same color a little bit darker we can do the same over here so just dabbing a little bit like an onion or some things in a spiral way they're overlapping a little bit maybe it gets a bit darker so just a suggestion of a shape don't go over uh, and outline every single thing because yeah just keeping it really as a suggestion helps you and you don't really have to worry about a thing and it's still communicating what it needs to communicate Again, let's pop a little bit of red. Some more red. Where's the red? It's right here. Here's some lines. You can use some lines, of course. Don't have to be all shape, but don't be too organized, too timid, too scientific about it. And I, you can always, you know, kill this edge right there. And yeah, now that we introduced some, so wet, I can maybe pop in some of this color there. Or maybe it's too much. Maybe you can always look. And I usually, I always say, I usually paint at an angle. So this would normally drip a bit and it will create even more interesting effects. But for the sake of the video, we'll just keep it as is. Now, while we are at this purple stuff, or red rather, I'm going to pop in some more details here. And adding some of these petals going like that. Maybe painting just around like you see the negative shape. Let's grab some more bright purple and we introduce these little brush strokes some more here we have maybe some yellow here in the middle maybe we can dab some yellow here why not this is unifying accent we will do that later okay so we just keep going just adding some more shapes and form to our little flower we're not being too liberal stuff is happening there's some more here yeah definitely it's going to be way darker in the middle that's how we create that center and here got to put some dark over here on that flower so I'm just adding it in here again brighter tones with these petals and keep these edges that we lifted that will be interesting to have just go around and Definitely be careful not to outline things too much. It's nice to have edges appear, disappear, and not be completely defined. 
Yeah, I'm just, I'm just adding a bit of this pink here. Okay. And then there's the super bright red that I like. Just add some shape to it. Maybe emphasize the red color. There's definitely more red on this side here. I'm just adding some more bright tones that immediately added some dimension. Here, there's this dark tone in the middle. And how about this one? I'm grabbing some yellow, some red and yellow, mixing into a darker tone and just introducing again all the details. And we'll add some more lines over it so you won't have to go into super detail with that one. Now the white in the back. How about use again this tone here? Just having some petals going like that. And we can put some that yellow is so intense. The cadmium yellow is really, really opaque. I'm gonna just dab a bit of yellow here. So the next one is the purple. Ultramarine, Lizarin, and I'm looking at some sort of a purple. So yeah, this dry, dried out really, really light. So now I'm gonna pop it a bit more. We should be nice and dramatic. Even though the background is all soft, I like that. It all adds to it, definitely adds to it. So here it stops right there. And again, you can add all kinds of movement to your brush strokes without being too outliney and too careful about what's going on exactly. Just keep it spontaneous, very dark over here. Apparently, we're gonna keep that darkness. Star stuff is happening. I would not, you know, introduce a fifth color, like a purple. You know how we have in our sets actually purples. I would mix the colors because that keeps it way more unified than usual. And, you know, definitely add some more dark where you need to. So these interesting flowers have these pointy, pointy petals, so pay attention to that. And there you go, there, there we go. Maybe, yeah, maybe paint a negative shade here, this flower that we sort of lost a little bit, but that's, that's okay. As we always say, whatever happens, that's okay. That's okay. Okay, so here, there is the dark. And now think about where your darkest dark you want it to be. Okay, we're continuing. I think, yeah, my, my phone stopped recording. So here we're continuing. So I'm mixing a very, very dark color. I'm gonna mix very dark color for this area. And you can paint the negative shape of, let's say, a little two, two stems that I see around. You can paint that. So this is, we're just punching things, making it a bit more rich and dark. So these are some very, very dark areas. A lot of pigment, less water. We don't want things to be floating everywhere. Maybe some of the green too, because these are more of the leaves. I'm just adding some uh, extra level of dark right there there is maybe some okay so let's make it a bit more green so here i'm going to add some more of that and again very very free getting a little bit more dark over here see how that automatically makes things pop a bit and some of these leaves are probably going to be on top of it. There's probably some that are a bit in front, in the front, more going here. And some more. So that added additional 
a layer of dark. Okay. And I'd like to really pay attention to these flowers. I'm going a little bit, paint something a little bit darker behind it to emphasize it. And again, let's grab some of this color and we will pop in some of these darks right there. All right getting there slowly but surely and now the fun part is with the small brush adding all our crazy accents that we like and the small refined lines that are really really going to take our painting to the next level but as you see i'm not going into too many colors just keeping it in the family family my uh, greens are very cool i keep the coolness to it because it goes well with this whole bouquet being in the shadow. So now I'm gonna grab my rigor brush. Before I grab the rigor brush, let me make this a bit more, create a little bit of a shape to this because it's slightly disappearing. So some edges could be sharp, some could be soft. Again. All right. And while we are with it, let me just add a bit more. There is, ah, there you go. There is another flower here, nice and light. Okay, a little bit of purple. And I'm just gonna add this other flower with just a few brush strokes. There you go. And maybe some more over here. Let me let it go and kind of let it all dissolve. But again, using the same color, reddish blue, creating a little bit of a purple. You can add some of these guys. Just for interest. Even if it's not quite like the reference, it's it's good to just have variety. Obviously, smaller, bigger, big, small. Rough refine. There's some more going on over here. So it's not all color color and there's no color on this side. We're just going to add some more some stuff happening. So all looks kind of nice and soft and we can unify it eventually. Uh, there is a little bit of dark that's missing over here. I'd like to maybe define these a bit more but mostly leave this area. I like how it's all dissolving, so we can just leave this area. And how about we anchor this whole thing? Now that I'm working on it, I definitely need an anchor, and that anchor is something a bit darker right here. That's similar. And you can even take your big brush, created a nice dark area here, like a shadow basically, which is pretty much what's going on here. It, it, it doesn't, it's very important when we paint vases and flowers and vases to, to have weight to this. It, you don't want your flower and your vases to be floating in the air, just like, um, yeah, like a picture cut out in those magazines that sell and those sites that sell flowers, we want to have an actual painting that has weight to it. So I'm going to add some more shadow. And that creates a nice little anchor. I'd like to see some more dark here again. It does, uh, it does really dry a bit lighter. So, okay, so now the fun part is the rigor brush. I'm getting my rigor brush and I'm gonna mix this greenish town with the phthalo green or turquoise, not sure what it is. And add some more fine elements that we see and they can go out of the page to our paper and have some dots, just more refined area. That, that way you have a very nice sophisticated painting with variety of elements. 
So these are all design elements. Again, thick, thin, rough, smooth, big, small, all of it. And that's what makes it a successful painting. I'm, I will spatter a little bit. Maybe have a couple more lines. Just make it more unruly. Here, there's another line. Parts are showing, part it doesn't. Maybe this will come out. Why not? Again, use a bit of darker. Just a suggestion. Don't make these lines thick. Very, very important not to go too thick. And you can just keep adding. Uh, and we don't want to go overboard, not too much. But as long as you keep your lines thin, there will be a variety in your painting. So I'm going to add a little bit of thin lines over here. Some are overlapping again on this side. Some are falling. There are the stems of this flower. It has a shape. Maybe there is a bud right next to it or something happening. Okay, again, a little bit of darker green, maybe turquoise. Again, we want to add some more. That adds a little bit of structure to this whole thing, the lines. Okay, and it could be in front, you know, doesn't have some flowers could be in front, some could be behind. We don't have to, you know, paint around them it's because things are overlapping and they're happening all around. And this flower especially probably could be, you know, having stuff around. So it's up to you how much of this uh, greenery you'd like to add. You know, you can add some dots, some but nobody's going to check on our reference, obviously. We just want to make it all fun. A couple of lines. My lines starting to seem a bit thick to my liking. So I will probably get a different rigor. I have this very, very thin rigor. So maybe I'll use that for that purpose. And then the lines will get really neat. So I'm really glad that I, we got to do this exercise, even though I wasn't present, I'm, you, you're doing great, I'm sure, and send me your pictures if you get to repeat this one more time. Yeah, just some more lines, just to make it a little bit more fun. And remember, it doesn't have to be exactly like the picture, we're just adding some more lines. This is our very, very fun painting. And finishing finishing touches now could be super fun. You can like get some more turquoise. Let's make some turquoise and, and water. And you know, spatter a little bit on top, a little bit here. Just gives this shimmery effect everywhere. So maybe there is some here. Just make it more exciting. I think the yellow would be a nice, a very nice accent. I'm just looking at it, probably just to bring out some light because I know we we did make it a bit dark. So I'm just going to maybe even bring out some yellow here in these areas. Just dab it. I know, you know, there is some flowers right there. So why not just, you know, yeah. You don't have to again be little. Here we go. Just introducing some more color. So it just creates this overall fun, fun, fun atmosphere. And I'm just gonna dab. These are the whole finishing touches. So usually, you know, the yellow does create sense of light. So if I put it around in some strategic areas. It will make it pop a bit more. You can even emphasize this yellow flower even more. And we don't want to overdo too much. 
maybe some of these flowers behind. But yeah, the yellow does give a sense of light. That's for sure. Just little accents. Doesn't hurt. So overall, this value around this yellow flower looks kind of the same. I almost want to make it maybe here a little bit more dark, a little bit darker. So because it's at the very base of our vase, so let's make this slightly darker to sort of anchor it again. And yeah, apparently there's lots going on over here from, from what I see. So there's some, some stuff. Maybe you can have, you know, a little dry brush, little fun lines. But yeah, less is more. Don't overdo it. Know when to stop. And I'm reaching a point where I may need to stop before I, I go crazy with this. And reds do dry a bit dark always. So I always go back and kind of pop some more accents so i would like to keep it bright even with a dry brush on top of it less water there's some more red here why not over here yeah but everything is a suggestion so even if you don't see exactly every single detail you get an idea of really of what's going on and it's a suggestion so with flowers again pay attention to that center here it's the darkest and sometimes yeah I do add maybe a little bit of white spatter yeah why not because you see these little tiny little white flowers so if you add this it's going to give a suggestion of maybe just one more dimension on top of it and just like that and voila this is it thank you guys for watching hope you repeat this exercise and if you have any questions let me know thank you all right bye